The Fairy Barracuda was a British carrier-borne torpedo and dive bomber designed by Fairy Aviation to replace the aging Fairy Albacore biplanes. The first aircraft of this type operated by the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm to be fabricated entirely from metal, it saw a difficult development stage and disappointed upon its maiden flight on the 7th of December 1940. Thankfully, the Barracuda Mark II rapidly replaced the underperforming Mark I, and it was not long after its entry into service on the 10th of January 1943 that it started proving itself in multiple theatres of war. From air raids in the Pacific, to providing air cover in the Mediterranean, to the dive bombing of the battleship Tirpitz, the versatile Barracuda was also used by the Royal Air Force, the Royal Canadian Navy, the Dutch Naval Aviation Service and the French Air Force. Let's take a closer look at this remarkable warbird. The Barracuda's development was protracted due to the original power plant intended for the type, the Rolls-Royce X, being cancelled. It was replaced by the less powerful 1260-horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. The experience of the prototype's test flying saw the model cancelled with only 23 Barracuda Mark I's constructed. But the design concept was sound, a shoulder-wing cantilever monoplane with large fairy Youngman flaps, which doubled as dive brakes. A tail mounting the stabilizer higher, similar to a T-tail, and wings capable of being folded back horizontally at the roots for carrier storage. So the definitive version of the aircraft, the Barracuda Mark II, needed to do little more than swap the engine for the more powerful 1640 horsepower Merlin 32 engine, driving a four-bladed propeller to come back in favor. Known for its forgiving flight characteristics, the Barracuda made carrier landings standard, with its high stability and forward cockpit view being open and wide. The Mark II had a maximum speed of 240 miles per hour, a range of 1150 miles, reduced to 686 miles when carrying its large 1,600-pound torpedoes. It had a service ceiling of 16,000 feet and could climb to 5,000 feet in six minutes. Not impressive statistics, but the Barracuda was carrier-borne. In the Atlantic, it faced no German air foe and flew with air cover when it did in the Mediterranean and Pacific. Unfortunately, the aircraft's ability to be tropicalized for the Pacific theater was very wanting. While it participated in air raids on Sabang in Sumatra, known as Operation Cockpit, with 17 Barracudas destroying oil storage tanks, as well as shipping and harbor installations. It was soon found the Barracuda's performance was considerably reduced by the prevailing high temperatures. Reportedly, its combat radius in the Pacific was reduced by as much as 30%. Worse, the Barracuda's low-altitude rated Merlin engine with its single-stage supercharger could not effectively fly over Indonesian mountain ranges. These shortcomings led to a decision to re-equip the torpedo bomber squadrons aboard the fleet carriers of the British Pacific Fleet with American-built Grumman Avengers. The Barracuda's involvement in Operation Avalanche, the combined U.S. and British landings on the southwest coast of Italy on the 9th of September 1943, was minimal, with 12 ferry Barracuda torpedo bombers aboard the HMS Illustrious, tasked to protect the amphibious force from attack by the Italian fleet and provide air cover for the carriers supporting the assault force. But when the Italians made no effort to attack the Allied forces, they were left unutilized. But it was during Operation Tungsten, an attack on the German battleship Tirpitz, while it was moored in Kafjord, Alta, Norway, on the 3rd of April, 1944, where the Barracuda had its real chance to shine, and it came through in spades. Roy Sidney Baker Faulkner led two naval air wings with a total of 42 Barracuda aircraft dispatched from British carriers, HMS Victorious and Furious, scoring 14 direct hits on Tirpitz using a combination of 1,600-pound and 500-pound armor-piercing bombs with the loss of one single bomber. Operation Tungsten the attack on the Tirpitz 
is an enthralling tale covered in a sister site's content. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. A total of 1,688 Mark IIs were manufactured, and by the end of the war, a total of 24 frontline fleet air arm squadrons were equipped with Barracudas. What's surprising to learn during the earlier part of its service life, the Barracuda suffered a fairly high rate of unexplained fatal crashes, often involving experienced pilots. It wasn't until 1945 the cause was traced to small leaks developing in the hydraulic system. The hydraulic fluid contained ether, and as the aircraft were only rarely equipped with oxygen masks and few aircrew wore them below 10,000 feet anyway, the pilot quickly became unconscious during such a leak, inevitably leading to a crash. At the end of May 1945, an Admiralty order was issued that required all examples of the type to be fitted with oxygen as soon as possible and for pilots to use the system at all times. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this presentation, please like the video and leave a comment below. If you enjoy content like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell.